The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one of whom I said, A man is coming after me who ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. I did not know him, but the reason why I came baptizing with water was that he might be made known to Israel. John testified further, saying, I saw the Spirit come down like a dove from heaven and remain upon him. I did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, On whomever you see the Spirit come down and remain, he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now I have seen and testified that he is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's be seated. Good morning to everybody. You know, I think I must have been blind. I didn't notice last time I was here. We've got this beautiful statue of Our Lady of Antipolo. Um, I actually know where that shrine is. I used to visit it every once in a while. It's about an hour outside of Metro Manila, so that's for your cultural formation, right? So today's Gospel, there's a couple of different lines I want to focus on. We see John the Baptist announcing Jesus, and we know that John's great role was to prepare the people for the coming of the Messiah, the coming of the Savior. And you would think that God would have made it really abundantly clear to John, but John also, like the rest of everyone else, had to kind of go through a process of figuring out who is this Messiah that I'm supposed to wait for and then point toward. And he has, when he finally, when he, it's revealed to him that, okay, this Jesus of Nazareth, who happens to be John's cousin, by the way, is the long-awaited Messiah, he uses some interesting words. He says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now, I don't know about you. When I was a kid, I used to get annoyed when people would say things, Jesus is the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Word. And I had no clue what they were talking about. And the reason I was really annoyed was because I knew that they didn't have any clue what they were talking about either. (laughs) And it's not to say that those titles don't have meaning. They have tremendously deep, significant meaning. But the problem is, most of us don't know it. So, first of all, what is John talking about when he calls Jesus the Lamb of God? Because I was like, why don't you just call him Jesus? You know? (laughs) Okay, what was he talking about when he calls him the Lamb of God? Well, first of all, John the Baptist was the son of Zechariah, who was one of the priests of Israel. So Israel, they weren't Catholic priests, but Israel, like every religion at the time, had priests. And the function of a priest is to offer up sacrifice. It's our function today, too. The primary function of a Catholic priest is to offer up a sacrifice. It is called the Mass, in our case, okay? But every priest in every religion, their function is to offer up a sacrifice to please God. And the sacrifice always has the function, more or less, of recognizing we are sinners, we are in need, and we are going to do something to, in a certain sense, to appease God, okay? To say there's something that, there's justice that needs to be done because we frequently mess things up. And we want to offer up a peace offering, a gift, okay? It's kind of like when you fight with your wife and then next day she comes home and there are roses on the, t- on the kitchen table or something like that, right? Okay, it's a peace offering, okay? In that moment, you are performing your priestly duty of making up for the fact that you stuck your big foot into it and now you gotta make up for it, okay? <laughs> or a box of chocolates sometimes has the same effect. Now, the sacrifice that was offered, there were different kinds, it could be grain, but a lot of times the sacrifice involved taking an animal and killing it, which in our mind frame today is kind of nasty, and you're like, well, why would you want to do that? Um, Partially because an animal was something precious, and partially because it is a symbol. What is the most precious thing that we can give? It is life. Well, 
Uh, in reality, it would be a human life if human beings are the ones who mess up, but we can't do that, so we will offer up a proxy sacri- offering. And frankly, animals were worth something because that's your meals. I mean, animals could, or were, were useful for labor, so there was a value. It would be kind of like, you know, today, offering up a laptop, okay? And God would always say, don't give me your old, beat-up, nasty animals. Give me the firstborn, the ones that are healthy. So it would be like taking a brand new Mac and saying, Lord, I know I've messed up, so here comes the sledgehammer. Kablooey. <laughs> okay, are you convinced now that I'm really sorry? I was willing to offer up a Mac. <laughs> that would be kind of like the, the sense of it. So John was the the child of a priest, and he was speaking in priestly language. He says, what was it that the priests in Israel offered up? Primarily a lamb. If you went to the temple of Jerusalem, it was the temple existed for the ritual offering of lambs. When did that happen? It happened at the Passover. Uh, Primarily, it happened all the time, but primarily it it happened at the Passover feast. Um, and they would bring in the new lambs through a certain gate, the sheep gate, and they would be led into the temple, and there would be all these holocausts and sacrifices in reparation, and it was the form by which the Jewish people entered into a covenant, a bond in which, a covenant is a whole other concept, it is a legal bond by which two people, two individuals, or two families, or two nations become one. And All of you adults who have children here have entered into a covenant. It's called marriage. And frankly, every person in this church has entered into another covenant. It's called baptism. Baptism is, it is a, if you want a contract, but it is a sacrament by which you and I become part of the family of God and he takes his own life and deposits it in our heart. That is called grace. Okay, and that is how you and I become family members of God because, frankly, it would be like you saying, I'm a family member with an avocado. You're totally different species. It doesn't work. But when God takes his own life and sticks it in you, now you're capable of being his family. Okay, so this is the way all this works. John says, Behold the Lamb of God, the one who is going to be sacrificed to take away the sins of the world. This is the function of the Messiah. That's what John is saying in that one line. Behold the Lamb of God. He's prophesying the one who by having his blood shed will take away the sins of the entire world. And then John says, um, something exciting and I can't find it. The reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be made known to Israel. So John's mission was to proclaim who the Messiah is and what his function is. That God has become man. He became man so that he could offer up his life or let it be offered up so that sins could be forgiven and you and I can enter into his family. You and I can become, we can share the divine life of God. John's mission is to proclaim that. And here's the thing, and he says he did it, he does it by baptizing, okay? And here's the thing, you and I have been baptized precisely because Jesus was willing to allow his life to be offered up as a sacrifice. And when he did, and when you and I got baptized, the fruits of that sacrifice entered into our life so that God's own life dwells in our heart through grace, at least as long as we're not in mortal sin. If you are, talk to me after Mass and we'll fix it in confession. Um, and, And you and I are called to proclaim that. You and I are called to witness to that in a world that badly, badly needs this message. So it is a very relevant few words. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. 
that is not just poetry. It's not just something weird. It is John saying, the reason why you and I have salvation has just come. And this salvation is being applied to each one of us. And you and I are called to proclaim that message. And it's interesting that the church puts this reading at the beginning of the new liturgical year. We're only in the second week of the new liturgical year, um, at least of ordinary time. And this is the church's message. Everything that's going to happen is just simply the unfolding of that message. So you are cordially invited. Let's get to, let's find ways. Let's be like John the Baptist. How can you and I, amongst our friends, without getting on a soapbox or being weird, but how can you and I find ways to let that message reach the people that are around us? And that's your homework, to figure it out. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.